Good morning, everyone. Today is the 7th of January, 2022, Friday morning. Back in 2009, uh, the Lord laid it on, on my heart to write a book called Biblical Christianity. You know, <laughs> um, there's been uh, a, a lot of books written on false doctrines and false prophets and and uh you know that most popular book that was written was the kingdom of the cults by walter martin and he mentioned a lot of cults but he didn't mention the number one cult which is roman catholic church but anyway with all the books written on the cults and false prophets and false doctrines i thought it might be good to write a book on biblical Christianity, <laughs> in contrast. Now, I do point out some of the false doctrines uh, in this book purported about Christianity. Um, now, I do not consider myself a theologian by any stretch of the imagination. So this is not a systematic treatise in dogmatics. But what it is, it's a summary of what I have learned over the last many years regarding the Word of God and my own personal study of it. The first chapter I deal with the false doctrines reported about Christianity. And the second chapter has to do with the discussion about the covenant between the Trinity before creation. The third chapter is an in-depth look at the absolute sovereignty of God over all things. If God is not sovereign, God is not God. The fourth chapter is an area that many have chosen to sweep under the rug and not talk about in so-called Christian circles today. And that is the fabulous doctrine of predestination, election, and effectual calling. And the fifth chapter has to do with Christ being manifested in the flesh and therefore bringing about our justification through the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. It also does an in-depth study of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The sixth chapter has to do with the doctrine of last things found in the Bible, often referred to as eschatology. There are many that refuse to take the Lord's own uh, rendition of the doctrine of last things, i.e. Matthew 24 and the complementary chapters found in other books in the Gospels. Finally, the last chapter, chapter 7, which... We know that number seven has to do with the perfection or completion is the eternal hope for the believer. So um, I wanted to let all of our listeners know that this book is available to you. I have this book available in PDF form, and I'm not about selling books. I'm about getting the truth of God's word out. And um, so I would, I would really highly recommend that if you would like to have this book uh, requested via email and I'll send you a PDF copy with, at no charge. Um, it's a it's a very easy read. Um, you could probably read this book in 30 minutes. Uh, I've tried to keep it concise and to the point. Um, well, this morning, let us be encourage that God is on the throne and he remembers his own. You know, you know there's a there's a song, The Lord Remembers Me. There's another song that says, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. And there are many songs that affirm God's trustworthiness. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to lean upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Leaning on the everlasting arms. And um, Andre Crouch wrote a song, I've Got Confidence. 
when trouble is in my way and I can't tell my night from day when I'm tossed from side to side like a ship on the raging tide. I don't worry, I don't fret. God has never failed me yet. Troubles come from time to time, but that's all right. I'm not the worrying kind. I've got confidence. God is going to see me through. No matter what the case may be, I know he's going to fix it for me. Well, what does Scripture have to say about this? Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee. The kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness. I will remember my covenant with thee in the days of thy youth, and I will establish unto thee an everlasting covenant. I will visit you and perform my good word toward you, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us, Lord, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. The Lord thy God, he is a God, the faithful God, which keeps with covenant and mercy with them that love them. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. Can a woman forget her sucking child? that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb. Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the, top, the palms of my hand. The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee, is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will not rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Well, those are just some of the scriptures that give us uh, great promises that God will never leave us or forsake us. So let us always remember that God is on the throne and he will remember his own. When trials beset us, he never will ever forget us. Well, this morning I want to end this little devotional with a, a poem and we're marching to Zion we're marching to Zion and this march is led by God's dear son this pilgrimage is not to a physical place but looking for a city the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven prepared for the bride this Zion's a place to eternally abide Many try to make Zion a physical place where rejection of Christ is an utter disgrace. But I'm marching to Zion, a spiritual place. May the good Lord be with you today. It's my prayer. God bless.